I'm John Atkins. I'm with the University of Florida Santa Rosa County Extension Office, and today we're out at uh, Mickey Diamond Farms, and we're going to be discussing uh, some of his operation, and uh, the portions this morning are going to be peanut varieties, and also we're going to be discussing uh, cotton disease and peanut disease. So, Mickey, if you'd like to tell them how your operation is, is going, and Thank you, John. Uh, we started out this year with uh, planting into a cover crop with strip till. Seeding rate was about six and a quarter seed a foot. Uh, we have several different varieties behind us here, but the main field is 06 G's. And some of these varieties are experimental. They're not even named yet. Uh, We've had uh, adequate rain this year, except for about a two week period. But uh, we the rain has been adequate. You can tell for the, the type of size of vine we got out here. But uh, it was strip tilled into a cover crop, planted twin row, planted it on May the 27th uh, for the later part of May. And from there, uh, there was no fertilize on this. We use residual fertilize from the prior year. It was cotton last year. Crop protection products, uh, the crop protection products that we put out here that protect our crop through the year, we try to be proactive on that. We start out with the latest, the first spray, second spray, we'll use Bravo Folicure, pretty well just a industry standard. Third spray is Convoy with Alto. Uh, fourth spray goes back to Bravo Folicure. Fifth spray go back to Convoy Alto again. And then uh, the sixth spray probably back to Bravo Folicure. Uh, that works real good for an 06G, which is what we have mostly. With some of these experimentals, you'll need to put something else in there, a little heavier, a little better for leaf spot. But that's being a uh, pretty good leaf spot program right there, especially for the 06Gs uh, and white mold. We, uh, we try to hit them every 14 days and just watch the weather and try to be ahead of a rain because a lot of this needs to be rained in to work when you're trying to go after the white mold. But that's pretty well the, the extent of that program. We planted these different varieties so that we'll be able to know what's gonna do the best in the future because lots of times these varieties will fade out and get where they don't make good so we'll know what's coming down the pipeline so we'll be able to know what to plant. And <clears throat> these right now are about 90 days old. So it won't be very long, another 30 days or so, and we'll be start pulling them up, checking them to see about maturity and when to harvest. Harvest to be probably around 135, 140 days, but could be sooner. Uh, we, have to, we have to just pull them up and check it. But as of taking the time to put all these varieties in, it just tells us, you know, when there's a better one coming along, because as soon as that better one comes along, that's the one you're gonna wanna plant. You know, might wanna look at planting, but tells us what we don't wanna plant also. Hello, my name is Barry Tillman. I'm the peanut breeder with the University of Florida, and we're here at Mickey Diamond's farm in Santa Rosa County. I want to thank he and Libby Johnson and, and uh, John Atkins for uh, helping to um, install this variety demonstration for peanuts. You, I'm standing by an experimental line here. We have three of them in this test, and uh, we typically have six locations of this um, demonstration, but this year we only have three. Uh, but this is a great looking location, uniform fields. And what we do with this test is we, we're looking um, to get information from a farmer's perspective on how our new varieties uh, grow in the field. 
So I really appreciate them doing this. We'll have some results for you on this. Um, these are, are all new runner type varieties that we're testing. They are um, not released, but uh, we're getting information that will hopefully help us to make that decision. So as we think about the data that we use to make these decisions, um, you know, typically we have three or four locations of uh, variety tests around the state. And this year we only have three. The COVID pandemic has, has slowed that down. I've talked to some of my colleagues in other states and in Georgia in particular, the same thing has happened. So um, our variety test data will be a little short uh, from 2020 coming uh, next year into 2021, but that's okay. We have a lot of historical data that will help us make decisions uh, as well. I just want you to be aware of that. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the, um, the, the issues that are happening in 2020. Um, you may know that we had um, pretty severe seed quality issues early in the, um, the, the season. And that was due to last year's uh, drought that occurred in September, late, late, late August through September of 2019. It caused some severe problems with seed quality. And we're suffering still from that. In fact, um, because of the seed problems, we had poor stands. And then that turns into more problems with spotted wilt. I'm seeing a lot of tomato spotted wilt this year. Um, of course, varieties are one of the biggest components of being able to, to minimize the risk of spotted wilt losses. And um, so I'd encourage you to take a look at the Peanut RX that will give you information on which varieties have the most resistance to um, spotted wilt, as well as the other two major fungal diseases, leaf spot and white mold. But this year, like last year, um, we're seeing a lot more spotted wilt, and this year is exacerbated by the poor stands. And that's one of the big risk factors is, is um, stand establishment. Um, so those poor stands, again, were a result of the drought in, the, in late 2019. And um, uh, when, when you have poor stands, it's just much more of a risk for spotted wilt. And that's what we're seeing this year. But and that's not the only reason. We saw spotted wilt also creep up into the um, uh, fields last year in 2019. So there were problems even then with spotted wilt. It's just one of these diseases that, that come and go and ebb and flow. And we don't really know why that happens, but we certainly wanna make sure that we do everything we can to minimize the risk from uh, disease. So um, seed quality was a, was a big concern. And um, I think there's also some help with varieties on seed quality. Um, uh, varieties do differ in many characteristics like disease resistance, like um, uh, uh, yield and grade potential, but they also differ some in their in their inherent uh, seed quality. So some of the newer varieties um, have shown to be a little more resilient. Um, it's difficult to grow good quality peanut seed. They need to be irrigated, you need to apply gypsum to them, uh, they need to be harvested on time, and when all those things um, that are required um, uh, can't happen perfectly, then you wind up with some potential for seed quality problems. Well, some varieties just respond better to others when those uh, adverse conditions occur. So I think that's one of the things to look at with the new varieties. Maybe instead of some farmers that are having to plant seven to eight to nine seeds per foot of row just to get a good stand, um, now some of the new varieties I think are gonna be better. You could plant maybe six seed per foot of row like we normally recommend and still get a, a good stand, adequate stand. So that's another thing to consider in terms of variety choices. So one of the things about, one of the differences in, in peanut varieties is also their seed size. We have varieties that are have large seed like the Georgia 6G and 297. Um, and if you're thinking about the seed cost, obviously peanut seed are sold by the pound, not by the count. So if you need to plant 100 pounds per acre um, to get a certain stand of a small seeded variety, that may take 150 pounds of a larger seeded variety to get the same number of seeds in there. So that's another thing to look at in terms of differences between varieties, not just their disease resistance, their yield and grade, but also their seed size um, could save up to $25 per acre in seeding costs uh, for some of the newer varieties that have smaller seed. Another thing to consider is how the varieties grow. Uh, if you, you can tell this variety here is a little bit taller variety. You can see it has a pretty good center stem. Over here um, to my right, you see a, uh, the standard Georgia 6G variety. It's a little more of a crown type plant. It's just to point out that the varieties differ in their plant growth habit. And um, they, not only that, but they, that difference means that they need to be grown differently. So the disease differences, disease resistance differences between them, the plant growth characteristics between them mean that we, we can learn how to grow new varieties. And it's not necessarily gonna be the same way that we've grown the old variety. So just as a for instance, um, one of our new varieties, uh, Flow Run 331, has a pretty large vine compared to Georgia 6G, which are, is our standard variety. Um, and I always tell growers, um, uh, if you plant a lot of seed like you would with 06G, maybe eight or nine seed per foot of row, that vine is just gonna get even bigger and taller, which makes more um, potential for leaf spot to be a problem. 
So learning how to manage the new varieties is the point. Maybe not as much seed. If you have a little more susceptibility to a leaf spot in a certain variety, the fungicide program is really important to change that up, to tailor it to that variety. Uh, if it's more uh, leaf spot resistant, you don't, may not need those uh, fungicides. If it's more leaf, uh, white mold uh, susceptible, you may need those fungicides that are more active on white mold. So learning how to tailor the varieties is really important. Um, and uh, normally we would have a field day. Um, this is a virtual field day, so I hope that you can get information from this that would help you into next season. Um, there's a lot of information also on the web about the varieties and how you would grow them. I'd call your attention in Florida to the Florida Peanut Team website. If you search for Florida Peanut Team, it'll come to our website. We've got information there on variety performance from a disease standpoint, from a yield and grade standpoint and um, it would help you make decisions in the coming year and even help manage your crop that's in the field this year knowing what um, disease susceptibilities there are in the varieties that you're growing and how you might better manage those. So um, with that I'll, I'll close and uh, thank you for your attention and time. All right, uh, good morning and it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. I've been to a number of meetings that you've had or these field days and I sure wish we could be together in the field right now, but this is better than doing nothing, and I'm grateful for that. I'm Bob Kimberite. I'm an extension plant pathologist from the University of Georgia. I cover corn, cotton, soybeans, and peanuts. I'm grateful to be invited back this year. I, every time I'm down here with, uh, with UF IFAS extension and researchers, I learn something that I can take back to our growers. I've been here for about 24 hours and moving up and down the roads in Escambia County and now in Santa Rosa County. The one thing that I run into more often than not has been sprayers. It seems like every time I take a turn in the road, there's just another sprayer coming and moving and moving, going out or they're spraying in the field. And what that tells me is that it's not so different here in Florida as it is in Georgia this time of year. This August, this August heat, this humidity we have, we are absolutely seeing a lot of disease problems in the peanut crop. I'm fortunate to be standing here at Mr. Mickey Diamond's field. We got to the, the variety trials you've already heard about. Uh, he's talked about his fungicide program a little bit. I'd just like to tell you four things, five things actually, that I want to take back to growers in Georgia, things that I've learned here, things that in a field day like this that I like to carry back to growers, even though the research is being done here, and I'm grateful to share in that. Georgia 06G still has a commanding role in peanut production in the southeastern United States, and that's going to continue. We know the new varieties will play out, and the ones that you have seen on Mr. Diamond's farm impress me greatly. You look at the seed quality, you look at the stand they have, you look at the lack of tomato spotted wilt virus. Tomato spotted wilt virus is severe across much of the southeast this year. We're seeing very little of it in these fields. It should give us a lot of confidence as growers in Georgia, Florida, southern Alabama as well based upon the research that's going on, that varieties are being developed and are coming that will have the resistance and the yield potential that we need in the future. That's the first thing I've noticed. And I won't go over the exact fungicide program that Mr. Diamond used. That's for him and possibly for the IFAS personnel to put out. But I will note this for our growers in Georgia and for those of you who are watching. Again, something I take back from the research. White mold and of leaf spot in this field. What I'll note is that he has used a number of different fungicide program or products out here. He's got at least four different companies represented in this fungicide program. And I think given the kind of pressure we have from white mold, the kind of pressure we can have from leaf spot, the kind of varietal resistance we can build in, I think that more and more growers are recognizing not only to be aggressive with the fungicide program, but also recognizing that it may not be just one company's program or one type of fungicide that they're going to use out here. He's mixing modes of action, he's mixing products, and I think you can look behind me in the field and you can see Certainly, it's been very, very productive for him. The message I would give the growers based upon the research that's being done here in Florida and also in Georgia is we cannot afford to not be aggressive. We must be aggressive in fighting diseases, especially in this hot August weather we have now. So that's number two. There's a wilted plant in front of me. Since I've been here for the past 24 hours with uh, the county agents, uh, with John Atkins, with Libby Johnson, what I can tell you is I have seen the following diseases in the peanut crop here in Escambia and in Santa Rosa County. We have seen a lot of spotted wilt. Not much spotted wilt here. Tomato spotted wilt virus has been bad in a lot of areas. What this says is his production practices and his varieties are working. This could be spotted wilt in front of me. We've seen some white mold. We've seen some white mold in a lot of fields. White mold tends to build up this time of year. And again, it's the integration of an effective fungicide program, but a fungicide program to come out here has led to the success he has here. 
When I was with John Atkins yesterday, we also visited a field that looks like it has cylindricladium black rot, or CBR. 20, 30 years ago when I worked here with John, we saw this every single year. It was probably the most dominating disease affecting peanuts in the Santa Rosa County area. It's basically gone away, but we can tell you from seeing it in the field yesterday, you have to recognize that it's not, it's not only a spot of wolf for growers here, but you also have to recognize that CBR can be a problem. We have to take the actions that can come for that. And again, the research that's going into it, these extension agents, the extension researchers and faculty, the J Station, all of that comes into helping us in Georgia to make a difference. It's the quality of the peanuts you have here. Okay. It's, it's almost miraculous for me growing and working in Georgia where we have center pivots in almost every field. Here we don't see that, that you can grow a crop like this. But the most important thing that's going into the research efforts here that I'm taking back is the integration of varietal development, integration of varietal selection, and the integrated use of fungicide programs across a wide variety of modes of actions has led to the kind of success I'm seeing. So again, if I was to wrap it up and say, what's the importance of a field day like this to not only Florida growers, but Georgia growers as well, it's the opportunity to see the results, the benefits, the fruits of the research that goes in, whether it's on the farm with folks like Mr. Diamond or it's on the J Station, what's the integrated approach for managing these peanut diseases, whether we're using the new varieties, developing varieties, or testing fungicide programs to see what makes the best difference. What's the best fungicide program for you as a grower in a peanut field? It depends on what's going to make you most money. And the kind of research that's being done is going to allow you to refine what fungicide program and what are the components that are going to help you to have peanuts that look like this and hopefully remain actively farming and productively farming into the far future. And thanks again for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to be out here. And I always enjoy this field day. Hopefully in 2021, you'll invite me back and hopefully we'll all be together in the field at that time. Thank you.